It's time for the first bonus mission of Battalion Wars. There are four bonus missions in this game that are unlocked after attaining a certain average score of the, over the course of several missions. For instance, to unlock this first bonus mission, your average score of the first seven missions in the game must be 80% or higher. Very easily unlocked due to the tutorial missions giving you some easy 100s. And as you can tell, each bonus mission will have you playing as an army that is not stereotypically American. Red alert, Comrade Commander. The Western Frontier has launched a fierce counterattack. Heavy tanks and gunships have been detected. We must prepare for combat. Your objective is to defeat the Western Frontier aggressors that are swarming into this sector. You don't got nothing but rusty old tractors and farm hands with pop guns. This is gonna be a cakewalk. <laughs> I think not, General Hermon. Tundran resilience is famous the world over. The goal of this mission is simple enough, just go through the stage and destroy every single frontier unit. It's interesting that they'd place a route mission in this game because doesn't that guarantee 100% power? Uh, I don't know. So this is a little unfair. Frontier heavy tanks, even though we've never seen the frontier using a heavy tank before. Ah well, it's not that much of a problem because we have control of Tundran heavy tanks, even though they just lost eight heavy tanks in the previous level, and they were making this big deal about, oh, oh, oh Tundra heavy tanks are invincible, and you just destroyed all of them. But don't worry, we have more, and what was I talking about again? No, oh, right, I was talking about what units we have right now. Six grunts, four anti-air units, and three heavy tanks. And we're going to get some light tanks later on in the level. As well as some additional reinforcements in the form of rifle grunts. Here's a couple of flame veterans. They're taken out pretty quickly. And here's our light tanks. They're somewhere in the stage. Now, we're warned about the enemy air units, but the gunships in this level, and yes, there are frontier gunships as well, they behave rather oddly. They don't seem to want to shoot me at all. And, you know, I'll point it out when we actually get really close to a gunship without it firing on us. Only two gunships are in the entire stage, if I remember right. So one thing you might be wondering is, is playing as Tundra any different than playing as the Western Frontier? Well, yes and no. No, they don't have any exclusive units like you might expect from, say, StarCraft, where the different races had different units entirely. But you'll notice that there are a few subtle differences between their units and ours. Uh, for one, the light tanks, which we just got, those have flamethrowers mounted into their backs, unlike the frontier light tanks, which only have machine guns. So that's pretty nice, even though it doesn't make too much of a difference. Now, where are the la where's that last grunt? Oh, they're all gone. Okay. Wow, four heavy tanks all at once. This is gonna be hard. I mean, we just had to deal with, say, one or two heavy tanks at a time, and now they're giving us four. I'm actually going to lose a heavy tank here. I don't like to use... I don't like to lose my tanks, because I'm pretty sure they count for a lot of technique. At least, I'm fairly certain tanks count for more than grunts as far as technique goes, but anyways... Uh, General Herman's going to taunt you throughout the level if you lose too many tanks. And, um, I don't know if anyone else noticed it, but it seems that that heavy tank just now picked up the jerry can from its fallen comrade. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that- I was pretty sure the enemies in this game couldn't pick up jerry cans because only the enemy drops them. So, it would make sense for only the player to be able to pick them up, but I guess I was just proven wrong. 
that, that would actually be very annoying if the computer decided to take advantage of it, but I suppose they don't. Uh, either way, those heavy tanks are dealt with. But it doesn't really matter because there's a couple more coming up right here. And if anyone's bored with me circle strafing to defeat heavy tanks, well, what else am I supposed to do? It's unfortunate that most of these bonus missions don't really turn out to be very interesting as far as challenge goes. I mean, they're fun. You get to play as the other armies. But, you know, what's the difference? I'm just going around doing exactly what I do with the Frontier, which is blow everything up. Fortunately, this level doesn't last too long. I just have to take out all of their bazooka veterans and the game is over. Though I do have to be wary of the gunships. I can hear it flying around and you can see it on the radar right there, but where is it? Oh, it's there? Why isn't it shooting at me? You know, it's flying right over me. You would think it would start shooting, but it doesn't seem to want to shoot. Well, that's odd, but we don't have much more need for anti-air veterans in this stage anymore. And I keep calling them anti-air veterans because that's what they're called in the sequel. They changed them from missile veterans to anti-air veterans. So, ap apologies if I get the two confused. I've been playing a lot of Battalion Wars 2 online lately. It's amazing that I can still find opponents for that game, even... Even though, you know, you'd expect the multiplayer to be dead. I mean, why else would they be getting rid of multiplayer for Wii games? Other than the fact that the Wii U exists. Still, it's good that I can at least get most of the footage I need in order to be able to show off Battalion Wars 2 multiplayer when, it com when we get there. Because there are things to say. Anyhow, this is just a bunch of bazooka veterans. They actually managed to take out one of my rifle grunts. And, hey, is there... Are there flame veterans over there? Oh, wait, the level's over, so we can't actually go over and fight them. I don't know why those are there. They're, like, really far away from what your objective is, which is to take out all of the grunts, all of the heavy tanks, and all of the bazookas. But, hey, random flame veteran to ruin your power score. Which it is going to ruin, by the way. Yep, 97. Whatever. I have a perfect 100 on this stage already, anyways. On to mission 7, which is rather short, which can actually only mean one thing. When a mission is short, it means... Oh no. Cutscenes! Lots and lots of cutscenes! <laughs> oh boy. Welcome, Sargorgi. Something to quench your thirst. My son is blind to the threat posed by the Western Frontier. Am I to take it that you wish to proceed with our arrangement? Yes. So, the pact is sealed. Blinds to the threat posed by the Western Frontier. That is all you will ever hear about why Sargorgi has this big beef with the Western Frontier to the point that he would make a secret pact with some kind of vampire nation, I guess? Thanks to you, Commander, we've stopped the enemy advance in its tracks. 
Now it's time to take out their forward positions and send these no-good grizzlies back home to Mother Tundra. We have a bomber squadron standing by, waiting to blow the Tundran army to smithereens. But first, we need to take down the Tundran's radar cover. That's why I'm sending you some artillery units. These heavy hitters will knock out the enemy MG towers from a distance. With the MG towers out of the picture, your infantry can move in and capture the Tundran radar stations to clear the way for our bombers to finish the job. What are you waiting for, Commander? Muster your battalion and get into formation! So when we start out this level, we have a brand new unit. This is the Assault Veteran. It's much like a rifle grunt, except it has an Assault Rifle. Now the Assault Rifle works like the Flame Veteran's Flamethrower in that if you hold down the button for too long, the weapon overheats and you have to let it cool down for a few seconds. But if you stop that from happening by rapidly mashing A once you're into that sweet spot, uh, you'll have a pretty powerful gun in your hands and it'll be firing off bullets like crazy. Assault veterans, in a word, are overpowered. They can take out any land unit in a matter of seconds. Like these flame veterans, for instance. Most infantry in this game are way too powerful when put into the player's hands simply because their weaknesses are no longer weaknesses because the player can account for them. Just about the only infantry that isn't stupidly powerful in the player's hands would be the Rifle Grunt and the Flame Veteran. Anyhow, onto the artillery units. These are of course long range cannons, very helpful because you can't get across that river without swimming. And as we'll see right here in just a little bit, some Bazooka Veterans will try to get across the river and destroy our artillery. However, by trying to swim, they've left themselves open because you can't actually shoot while swimming and you're completely vulnerable unless you dive under the water, which the, which the AI never does. A better choice here would have been to just not swim and just uh, get everyone at, behind the trees because apparently the artillery can't shoot past trees, walls, other indestructible scenery objects. The key to using the artillery effectively is to always have them waiting still. Because, as I've mentioned, the way the AI works in this game is if, is if they are following the player, they won't actually actively shoot at things. They'll wait until they get attacked first or are ordered to attack by the player. But by leaving them standing still, they will actively shoot at anything that's in range. And that includes anything way across the river, anything they can see, anything they're able to actually hit reasonably so you just gotta position your artillery and then have them wait because they will shoot on their own they're, they're very brilliant units that in that sense which is why we almost never get to use them ourselves and as you just saw if you try and fire the cannon while moving you're not gonna hit anything because the cannon would then be pointed elsewhere not a lot of units work that way in this game there's one or two and of course we're timed as well I have no idea why the bomber squadron can't just wait until we're done, why they have to commence their run anyways, no matter what, is beyond me. But the weird thing is that I'm actually not sure what triggers the timer here. You can see that it wasn't there from the start of the level. Um, I watched someone else's run of this stage, and he didn't get the timer started until he had already captured two of the radar stations, which is very strange to me. I'm also not sure what triggers the second gunship, but uh, in any case, it's time to start capturing things. Of course, we've got to make sure the flame veterans aren't in our way first. They do a lot less damage than I thought they would in this level. It's very odd. Also, we can see that the artillery have already started working on the uh, enemies near the other two capture points because that tank was already damaged and I don't recall ever shooting at it. <laughs> that's one down and by the time we get to the second one everything near it will have been destroyed as well I really like this level it's very strategic in that you have to use the artillery effectively 
then again, I suppose just having it sit still in this particular position while absolutely nothing tries to actually destroy it, aside from easily destroyed gunships and bazooka veterans that are trying to swim, which is a death sentence in this game. Uh, yeah. I suppose it's worth noting that you could actually take the capture point on the far left of the map first, because even though you have to go through the river to get there, it's actually shallow enough that you can walk through it and have your tanks and have the artillery drive through it without them sinking to the bottom or having to swim, which is very nice. But then again, since enemies come at you from the right capture point first, the player's more or less funneled to take that one out first, so... I don't know. I keep coming up with ways to make this game better designed, because it could really use some some challenge. It could They could really up the ante on the difficulty a, lo a little bit. Then again, maybe I'm just so good at it? I, I don't know. Here comes gunship number three, and as uh, you have seen, those gun towers may be far away from my assault veteran, but since they're sitting still, the assault veteran can take them out from very far away because the bullets don't vanish after having gone a certain amount of distance. And I almost lost one of my assault veterans there, but I was fortunate enough to get him behind the tower before he suffered from that one bullet that would take him out completely. This isn't like Advance Wars. Units don't mysteriously drop in power after being hit a couple of times. Which would add to the challenge, but I that would actually be more frustrating than helpful to this game's difficulty. Five minutes, well, considering that the timer starts... Uh, I'm not sure, I'm just thinking about the, how much time it would take to reasonably complete the level. Let's see, the timer started at around, around 3 minutes into the level, so I guess we have a reasonable amount of time to complete it. Oh well. I I'm sorry, I'm just rambling because all that's really left is to take the last capture point, because what's one single rifle grunt going to do? He's had it, Commander. <laughs> Now, in case anyone's wondering, no, the timer cannot run out during a cutscene. It's going to look like it could run out during a cutscene, because the game pauses for a few minutes before going to the end-of-level cutscene here. But no, if it runs out during this period right here, nothing happens. Anyhow, that is the level. Now it's time to see the results of our hard work. Sylvanian crest on those bombers! What the heck is going on? Greetings from Exylvania, Salgogi. Kaiser Vlad has chosen to decline your offer of an alliance and make war on both your armies instead. What is she talking about, father? Secret. I made a pact with the Exylvanians that would ensure victory for the Tundran territories, but I have been betrayed! Looks like the Exylvanians scored in both end zones before anybody even knew they were in the game! If either of our nations are to survive, we must unite against the common foe. What say you, Brigadier? You got yourself a deal, Marshal. And call me Betty. Today, the world reeled in shock as Exylvania launched a devastating attack on both the Western Frontier and the Tundran Territories. In its aftermath, these two former adversaries put centuries of bitter enmity behind them by forming an alliance of nations. And so, the Fighting Frontier and the Tundran Bear find themselves fighting side by side in a war which will decide the fate of both 
their nation. Oh wow, a perfect score. That is the best way to end that level. That is amazing.